We're so excited to welcome Gretchen Barron, who is Richland County Council Representative for District 4. And she's going to talk a little bit more about networking and references and about once you submit that application, um, what you can do to bring your, your application to the top of the pile. Um, and obviously, County Council, Richland County Council reviews applications. So she's going to speak from her experience, um, her real life experience um, doing this very thing. Thanks and welcome for welcome. Uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. It's great to be here uh, in the in the cypher room with all you wonderful women. And just as to make a correction, I am in District 7. I represent District 7 um, uh, in Richland County. And I, I just want to talk a little bit about um, the importance of we this came up in our small group or in our breakout room. And that is women have a tendency to as I have called it, operate in the spirit of the downplay. And we dumb down so that we avoid the spotlight. And uh, that gets us absolutely nowhere, ladies. And when we're talking about um, going on some of these larger boards, uh, whether it's um, at the local level or on the state level, you have to let your light shine and you can't, you should not dumb down or um, play down your expertise. It is extremely important when, uh, when you are ready to step into this place that you as a local representative and a local elected official, of course, I want, I want you to, um, to sign on to your local boards. Richland County currently, uh, we have 60 vacancies on local boards. And I just wanna take a, a, a moment and give a, a big thank you to Barbara Rax and this amazing organization for really supporting us in making sure that women knew about these opportunities that we have in Richland County. And, and it's important that as you look towards these opportunities, local boards give you an opportunity to leverage your current resources or your current talent and then put it into your community. I will never forget the first time that I sat on a local board that was appointed uh, by county council, one of the things uh, that, you know, when I walked in the room, there were people that I had heard about, but never met. And I'd heard about them and, and I was like, wow, there's so-and-so and there's so-and-so. I can't believe I'm in the room with them. Not only am I in the room with them, but it was my Shirley Chisholm moment I had a seat at the table and I didn't have to bring my folding chair. That was empowering. So as you prepare to, um, Emily did a great job at, you know, telling you how to find your, um, find the board that you're interested in. But now that once you found that board, I wanna talk to you about making sure, making sure that once you found the board, then before you apply, I want you to go try it before you buy it. Because oftentimes we'll we'll see we'll see it, or we'll hear oh this is a great board I want to be on the adventure board and then you didn't realize that adventure board um, did a whole lot of work I, and and maybe you don't have the time for a board that that requires um, a, a heavy schedule as a board member so try it before you buy it even as you try it before you buy it and you're going to their meetings then. If you have the opportunity and it's a, it's a member organization and you feel very passionate about it, join that member organization because the, uh, the executive director sometimes will um, ask members if they are interested in being appointed as a board member. Uh, in Richland County, the process is very, very simple. I am happy to say that I sit on the rules and appointment committee. So those of you who applied, you will, um, you will come and have an audience with me and two other people. So here's what that application looks like in Richland County. What it looks like in Richland County is it has basic demographics, your name, your address, email address, all those things, right? It's got that there. And then there's some specific questions. So if you got a pen and a paper, jot this down. Uh, if you haven't applied for Richland County boards, um, and they, there's a question that talks about your, your characteristics and qualifications. Uh, it also talks about um, something if you're on a current board and were you recommended by a council member? 
Emily stated this. And so when she stated this, that um, you want to let your council member know that you are applying. I, I saw Dr. D. Bell. Um, she's here in, at this conference and she called me up and said, hey, I'm I'm, I want to I want to apply for this board, and we talked a little bit, and it so happened to be one of the boards that I used to sit on, and now I'm the liaison for, uh, and and we talked, and so when she um, when she comes before council uh, in our committee meeting, I would have already been able to speak to Dr. D. Bell um, to my colleagues. That's important. You want someone to be able to speak for you and speak for the great things that you do in your community, and and. And so now you put in your application. Now you've turned in your application. What's next? Oh, before I go there, it, it doesn't hurt to submit a, a resume. We don't ask for one, but you, it doesn't hurt to submit a resume just as a little gravy uh, so that we can see who we're looking, who we're um, interviewing. And so when you get to your interview, uh, right now we're doing them all on Zoom. Uh, but uh, about six, seven years ago, when I sat on the on my first board, uh, I had to go down to the county administration office and uh, sat in the room. It was very awkward, I must admit. Um, the the council members sat around the table in a U shape, and uh, they had a chair sitting in the middle of the room. <laughs> and in and in the middle of the room, I there, you know, they sat me there and, and asked me all these questions. So some so let's talk about some of the questions that you may. Um, that you may have in, in there. So some of the questions when we come, just basic questions. I always ask, why do you want to serve? Why do you want to serve? Uh, another one of my colleagues will ask, do you know who your council member is? Uh, it is not helpful for you to say, I applied for this board because, um, you know, so-and-so asked me to, to apply. Well, as, as a council member, it makes me feel as though if so-and-so didn't ask you, you wouldn't have applied. You need to own the fact that you want to be on this board for your own personal um, response, okay? So, so just know when you come in there, you talk about the expertise. A little tip to talk about too, if you studied your boards and you've tried it before you bought it, then you should know um, where your where you as an individual will bring um, more worth to this organization. What do I mean by that? If the board is lacking black and brown individuals, talk to that point. If the board is lacking females or women, talk to that point, okay? Use those things to your advantage because it says to me as a council member that not only that this individual has um, participated in the organization, but knows the background of the organization. Another question that may come up during your interview will be, will be um, if you had to change one thing or if there, what is a, pro, a priority that you have for this organization to help come to pass. Time restraints are another, is another question. If you list on your application that you're involved in let's say seven or eight other organizations, um, one of the things that will come up is that, well, you're heavily involved. Do you have the time to dedicate to this position? That that will be um, a big kicker, a big kicker, I will tell you, um, with, with one of my colleagues. Uh, if you decide to apply for multiple boards, please separate them. Please put them on different applications uh, because that can also um, be deceiving. And we want when any SE will women come before council, we want them to say that, hey, this is the board that I want to sit on at this moment. And then I also have a separate interest. Uh, and, and so this is a little bit of insider trader, uh, a trading information um, that I've learned uh, just sitting on this board, um, sitting as a council member uh, that will help your name rise to the stack. So now what do we do after we've submitted our application? You go back to doing what you were doing before. You will continue to work in that organization, continue um, to uh, be visible, talk to your council members along the way, keep that line of communication open because that, if that council member recommended you, and I know that I would want to know, I would want to know, hey, D, have you heard back um, from the county? 
And if not, then I could go and speak on these behalf and say, I have a constituent that applied for this board. Where are we in this process? Um, there is that, so you will, if you're noted, if you are selected or not, you will be notified by the county and you will either receive an email or a letter. And with that, they will tell you, okay, congratulations, you've been appointed or you know, we, the regret letter. But we know all of our women here today, they're gonna get the, the congratulations letter. And then the next steps will be that you will start to attend your meetings. Uh, what happens if, you, if, if you're not selected? If you're not selected, keep working at it, keep going, find another board. Uh, throughout the year, we take applications. One of the things that we're discussing right now is, uh, to have an open application process in Richland County. That, that's a thought that we have on the table that we will be discussing uh, next week, as a matter of fact. And so if that is the case, then that means that you can apply all year long. And as you apply all year long, then that means that we will continue to uh, interview and continue to recruit. So I see there are several questions here that we, um, that's the end of my presentation. I did not want to, um, to give you too much to because it is this process is this is the meat and potatoes of it you know uh, Richland County has it quite easy quite easy there is um our application process is of two pages and the first page is the one where you you do most of the work just as a tip there's not a lot of space so choose your words very carefully when you when you um complete it uh and lastly I want to bring to your attention that of, I, I did a rough count, and I think that Barbara would love this. Uh, I think we received roughly 40 applications, and uh, of the 40, uh, there was uh, 32 women, and I'm cross-referencing, I uh, haven't got a chance to cross-referencing, reference the list of SC Will women versus the applicants, but just at a glance, I would, I think that the majority of them came from this organization. So big thank you um, for helping us uh, move this forward just a little bit further. So Sarah, we wanna take some questions. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for, for that recognition. Um, you, you are correct. We, um, I know I looked at that, that list of women. Um, and so that's a, a good example in terms of um, we asked uh, women to submit their applications to us um, and we put turned every everything into the county for them um, so that it's that little bit of extra push. Um, we know that Gretchen is our friend. Um, Jessica Mackey is another friend on council and they're both very actively working to fill these seats. So thank you and please use us as a resource. I mean, that's what we're here for. Our, our whole mission is to get more women into service and into leadership. Um, and you'll notice, um, certainly if you were not involved with us prior and on our mailing list, the reason that we asked for your county is for that reason so that when deadlines come up we can send targeted emails to let you know about open seats let you know about deadlines um, so if you just keep your eyes peeled in your inbox um, for that kind of information we're not going to bombard you with information about greenville if we know that you live in richland county so we can get very specific so thank you for for recognizing that gretchen we appreciate it and thank you for working with us um, to help get more women and, and more diversity on the boards in richland county um, so there's a question, um, is there still time to apply for the vacancies in Richland County? I know that that deadline was earlier in March. Um, does it make sense to still submit an application and get it on file? What are your thoughts on that, Gretchen? So, um, and I think I saw our interim clerk. She's she's on the, uh, here she as well. She put it well. in the chat also. Uh, well, oh, well, I see she, in, in, that's joined us. Yeah, she's here. And, and so uh, this is Gretchen speaking. This is Gretchen speaking. I say, turn in your application. I, uh, you know, worst case scenario, it's gonna go on file. It'll go on file, but you know, who knows if if it's a. And this is a part of our current conversation. If if we don't, you know, if we if we don't have the vacant or the applications for a particular board, then we can go and look in that pool that's in the file. So I'm saying turn it all the way in all the time because we don't take it, we don't take that um, application down. It doesn't change or it hasn't yet. So keep it, keep them coming. And Michelle, don't, don't um, be mad at me. <laughs> but, 
sir. Very good. Um, so I think you have already addressed this, but maybe you can reiterate. Um, the question is, so there's nothing wrong with contacting council members to advocate for yourself. And I think nothing wrong with you advocating for yourself and nothing wrong with you asking other people who know you and can speak on your behalf to advocate for you. Is that correct, Gretchen? Oh, absolutely. And it says volumes when you have someone to speak on your behalf, especially your council member or other elected officials, um, because it does hold a lot of weight. Uh, I will tell you, it holds a lot of weight. But when you show up for the interview, though, I will let's just talk about it. When you show up for the interview, it's just like going for a job. So you want to outshine everyone that we will see. Uh, it, it's a lasting, it, it is a lasting impression. So, you know, contact someone or your council member, but definitely when you come to that interview, give us all of you. Yeah, and one thing that I wanted to also mention is, you know, Gretchen said that there were 60 open seats on boards and commissions, and that's just in Richland County alone. Um, and that is amplified all across the state. So, I mean, there are positions that need to be filled that no one is even applying for. So that's not to say, don't be on point with your application and your interview, but there are positions out there and you may have an idea of what you want to serve on, but it may be an opportunity for you to get your foot in the door to look at what is available, get in and serve. It might not be your tip top number one first choice, but it gets you involved. It gets your name out there. It gets those networking and those connections to start happening um, that you can parlay into other opportunities to serve in the future. But there are lots of seats out there, and I know I, we, we may have someone on here from Charleston County. I know that we were astonished when we looked earlier in the year. It was hundreds of open seats in Charleston County, or it may have even been city of Charleston. So I think that you would just be incredibly surprised at how many boards and commissions out there that make decisions that deeply affect our daily lives. And there are just a very few people and a lot of open seats and not a lot of diversity, not a lot of women. So we want we want all of you competent and confident women to get out there and start applying. Um, so let's see, another question we have is how do you get a fill of a board of a, oh, the, maybe it's the feel of a board if the board is inactive. So does I, that make I would, sense to you, Gretchen, it, or do it we does. Need some clarification it, on that? It, it does, it makes sense to me because there are some boards that are inactive. So what I would do before getting a feel is to determine is to reach out to the clerk's office to see why this board is inactive. If the board could be inactive due to lack of participation or no longer needing, um, we, know, we may no, no longer need this board. Uh, so before you apply for a board that's inactive, check with the clerk's office first. And then if, if that clerk says that uh, it's active, well, it's inactive, but it needs members, then reach out to that organization that um, that board governs over. Very good. Thank you. Um, this is another question about, you know, vacancies. If you're the only person on a board, how do you build the board again? So if there, re repeat it again for me, uh, Sarah, I just want to make sure that I answer. Yeah, that. sure. Um, it's just if, if you are the only, it sounds like a board where there's maybe only one member on that board um, and interested in trying to get interest in getting people to serve, to build that board up again, to fill the seats. So it, again, this is a conversation that you need to have with, with your clerk's office as, as well as the organization that you're representing. One thing that we are looking to do in Richland County is to reach back out to those organizations that says um, and say, hey, you've got 10 vacancies. You need to recruit for yourself first. And so if you're the only person on the board, then you then it becomes big shoes to fill. And we're and we're looking to you to, to recruit from the community and ask them to to apply. And in return, also. Um, one thing that we're doing in the county, some of our boards are directly connected to um, departments within the county. So we reached out to the county administrator and said, hey, there's lots of vacancies here. Can you can you tap these departments and ask if they can recruit from within? 
Very good. And I just want to clarify, I'm, I'm noticing in the chat um, that we do have someone from Charleston County who's with us today. And it looks like that that number, the um, rough number that I cited was city of Charleston. So I just want to make sure since we have representatives here that we're, we're being fair um, in terms of that quality quantification. Um, I also want to let you know that there are some questions, you know, people are asking about contacting our presenters. And we are going to share email addresses for our presenters um, actually this afternoon, as soon as the conference closes within an hour or so. So we'll send out the email addresses today. So if you do want to connect with Gretchen or with another um, person who's presented today, we'll, we'll facilitate that for you. Um, another question was, how do you find deadlines for board positions? And certainly we have put the information about our database up. Um, a lot of the information will link you to the particular municipality so that you can look into those deadlines. Um, Gretchen, do you have any other thoughts or insight on, on deadlines and keeping up with that? No, I think that you guys do a great job with it. I, I always send people, if they, if, they, if they live outside of Richland County, I always send them to your website. So uh, you Thank are my you. Well, resource. And, if you, and again, if you don't see information that you need on there, you can't find it, get in touch with Emily at, at SC Women Lead or gap at scwomenlead.net. Um, and she will sleuth it out for you. I'm telling you, she does not let any, if somebody is interested in serving, we are not going to let you get away without getting the information that you need. Um, so this is more of a general question, I think, about networking and, and um, promoting yourself or lobbying for yourself. How do you build, um, and I'm a, the pit bull muscle, um, being firm without being considered aggressive? Well, well, I think that, you know, as we develop, and, and I, this is where I started, uh, this presentation. So as we develop in um, becoming women who lead, there's some things that just have to be settled. And, and, and being settled is that, you know, I know that my personality could come across strong. So if I know that about myself, then I, I then have to make sure that I am current, I'm, I'm constantly checking it and to make sure that, you know, okay, it's not coming off too strong, but it's, it, it is coming and getting my point across. So um, I, I say that we, you know, we own our personalities and go into the room and, and sit into that seat and to know that usually if someone has a challenge with you, it's not about you. <laughs> and, and so that this is that's probably just a, a little a woman, a, a woman to woman check. Uh, and so, you know, own your truth about who you are and stand confidently and lead because that's the only way that we can lead is just to be confident and be um, unapologetically who you are. Sure, and I think that some of that muscle is probably um, a muscle of not caring whether people think that you're being too assertive. We've, we've heard that from a, um, a couple of speakers today that sometimes you just have to get to a point where you don't worry about that as much, um, that that is someone else's problem. And, and I forget what the saying is, right? But you, you can't fix other people. You can only fix yourself. So that's right. <laughs> If it's, if it's something that they have an issue with. Um, sure. So this is another question. Um, do you have to sit with the council if the governor appoints that position? And I'm not sure if that's one that would be something you're familiar with. Um, maybe we can get um, Emily or um, Barbara or someone who has some more expertise in the statewide positions to jump in in the chat and answer that question for us. Um, very good. Well, Gretchen, you have been, again, so informative. Thank you so much for your time. I know that you're very busy.